so we're sitting here with Fergus Gregg, who's running for president of the Glasgow University Union. So why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, my name's Fergus Gregg. Uh, I'm a third year law student. Uh, I've been on the board of management since the end of my first year. I was a two-year PSM. In the past year, I've taken on the added role of like daily services coordinator. So I've had a lot of in-depth uh, relationships with the staff to make sure that you know the, the quality of service the students get is as high as possible. So I've had a quick look at your manifesto, and one of the things that you first mentioned is the Let's Talk campaign. Um, which was launched just before Christmas. It's all about raising awareness of sexual assault and rape kind of on campus at universities. And you mentioned that you want to start kind of getting to work on that. So what are your goals for the Let's Talk campaign? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I mostly have taken a lot of what they've already set out, a lot of the measures they already outlined in their petition, whereby they wanted to encourage, in, in the actual petition itself, it said student, student body executives. but. Uh, we're going to have to take that step further and make it the entire board of management for the Glasgow University Union, simply because the executive aren't always on duty every single night. So these sort of things could happen when there isn't a, like a, an executive member on. So all of the student body, uh, student board of management would need to have that sort of training to be able to deal with these situations. Because obviously at the moment they kind of get tossed into to it and expected to know what's going on. Uh, the other big point, uh, big part of that is Fresh as Week and Fresh as Helpers. Uh, I was kind of discussing it with a few of the other potential candidates for like uh, Honorary Secretary at the Glasgow University Union and our past, our soon to be past president, that's harsh, uh, Roy Slater. Uh, we can make it like a big cross campus thing whereby all of our Fresh as Helpers, you know, the QMU, the SRC, the GU, uh, GUSA and ourselves all meet up and do bystander intervention training because then you've got like a massive body of students roughly like 400 to 500, all with bystander intervention training who can prevent uh, sexual violence on campus, you know, not just for Freshers' Week, when the Freshers are probably just getting used to things at Glasgow, but throughout the year as a whole, and it will benefit a lot more people than just the Freshers themselves. And so leading on to that, you also mentioned consent classes in your manifesto, and I was just wondering, who would they be for? Would you make that for the board or would you make that like drop-in sessions in the GU? What are your thoughts on that? So I reckon I'd probably make it, or I would hope to make it, a thing whereby the board of management or our freshers helpers would attend like at least one, but predominantly they would be aimed at being run throughout the week in freshers week in our building and it's totally voluntary whether people want to come down or not. Uh, hopefully we would get a good crowd for it and almost certainly, you know, because we obviously have a lot of fresh helpers that would go around the building during that time to try and decorate it for the night's events and stuff, they would drop in and they would get that sort of uh, that, that sort of education as well. Do you think they'd be popular, or how would you advertise that to people to encourage them to come along? Yeah, that, that's actually like probably one of my main worries about it is that um, a lot of people seem to take the attitude. Not everyone. A lot of people seem to take the attitude, though, that they're maybe not for them because they obviously wouldn't ever reach that point where they needed to understand what consent is. They obviously, obviously know what it is already, but in fact, a lot of people don't know the, the full ramifications of what it means to be consenting. Uh, and so hopefully through just like our normal channels of social media, our PR team literally on the streets promoting it to people and saying this is going on would be enough to get a good crowd. If not, um, we would have to think of some other way to try and get people involved, maybe uh, linking up with other societies, maybe the feminist societies on campus, or uh, maybe the Let's Talk campaign organisers themselves. And you're talking about improving the union by looking at funding programmes for union staff? Yeah, so this is probably an area that a lot of past parents have kind of not really tried to focus on. Um, the staff at the union obviously are like, our basic face to the student population. Um, when you come in on a high Thursday, the first pe pe people you're going to see are going to be our cash desk people, our stewards, or the bartender behind the high bar. Um, so, uh, like one of the things we need to do is make sure that the quality of service they're providing is going to be, you know, at the very, very top. And at the moment, the level of training they get is literally like, you know, you get your licensing training, you get taught what you need to know by the manager, and then that's kind of it. 
But if we can take that a step further to give them like proper, proper hospitality training through like seminars, like weekend seminars or cocktail bartender training, you know, just things like that whereby they can up the standard at the Glasgow University Union and make sure that when a society holds a ball or a fundraising event, we can give them the best quality of service, really fast, really cheap. Um, and it, like the staff themselves, if they feel like they're being taken care of like instantaneously, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to be happier in their jobs and they're going to be much, much happier to be, you know, go that extra mile for the students themselves. And so in Hive especially, you mentioned that there's currently some problems. So what do you think are the current problems with Hive and how are you going to tackle those when you become president? Yeah, um, so obviously the big one would be the fire alarms. Um, fortunately, it's looking like those should be starting to get taken care of already. Uh, I think I'm probably going to have to continue on a lot of the work that Rory's already started. He's uh, implemented a lot of new uh, like software with the fire alarms, whereby we can make sure that you know evacuations don't have to have to happen straight away. There is like going to be small delays between then so that we can make sure that it's like a genuine fire that's going on, not just somebody's, you know, mucking around with it or there's a fault in the system type thing. Uh, we've also got estates and buildings helping us with that and getting, putting added pressure onto the fire alarm companies to make sure that they sort that out. Um, other than that, like the only other big problems would be the, the flow of the building isn't quite mapped out too carefully yet. Obviously, I think a lot of people have noticed there's crushes around the cloakrooms or around, like, between the doors of the well and the hive themselves. That just comes down to, like, a couple of extra stewards, making sure that people move through faster or having extra staff in the cloakrooms so that people can get their cloak, uh, coats out earlier in the evening. Or even designating, you know, a second or a third space within the building to be a cloakroom area whereby people can go and get their coats faster. And in terms of, like, getting outside DJs, Coming to work in the hive, you're quite keen on getting kind of extra events in the hive, aren't you as well? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think at the moment uh, there's a lot of potential for the hive to do a lot of interesting things. So recently, the trampolining club had their own Friday night for their big trampolining thing, and they got DJ Toastin, who was the QMU's cheesy pop uh, DJ, and they absolutely loved it. They absolutely loved him. Um, this Thursday, Hispanic society are taking over the well with their own Hispanic DJ. It's little changes to the regular format that can make a huge difference. So you can get DJs, you know, from sub club who do specifically R and B or you know just those kind of specialized nights where you can say, look, here's something interesting, here's something different to the regular format that you might be interested in, or people who don't normally come to the Hive would be really interested in coming and experiencing because. I know a lot of people certainly are interested in like alternative music, kind of like the rock, the metal and stuff like that. It wouldn't take, I think, a lot of persuasion to say one night change the well or something to doing to, to having a cat house DJ, you know, just little changes to the format or even big changes, making it once a month we get in an external Radio 1 DJ or Somebody, somebody a bigger name, up and coming name, or even a student DJ who's trying to make a name for himself. And you've also breached the idea of having drop in question and answer sessions in the union. Do you think that's necessary? Do you think people would come along to those? I, I would hope that people would. Uh, I know a lot of people do prefer to just send emails and stuff, yeah. um, but I feel like you'd, you'd never get quite the full answer you're after in just an email because obviously you can't completely understand it. It's a lot easier if you're. you're face to face and you're able to tell somebody here this is what I think we can do to solve your problem. Um, in terms of the numbers of people, honestly I have no idea, but you would assume that people with any form of issue would quite happily come along, even people who didn't have issues but just wanted to find out more about the union, like people who want to know how to get involved with the union committees or the union board of management, if they can come along, they can ask it and we can point out this is when an election is going to be, this is when ENTS committee is going to be taking on committee members, that sort of thing. And finally, um, the Glasgow University Union has always had kind of like an establishment feel. 
do you think that you're the right person to change that, given your background, or do you think you can kind of change the viewpoint that people have about that union? Um, I would certainly hope that people don't see me as just another one of the establishment, one of those people who's always been a continuation of the same. I'd like people to see me as kind of someone with a bit more out there ideas and is certainly open to changing things. You know, I, I would never consider myself as having the right answers for the union. The union is not a place where even the 17 people that make up the board of management are going to have the right answers. It's going to take a lot of input from people outside, you know, the regular students who come in and go, actually I really don't like the food the server is serving, I want it to change in this way. Great, that's something we can go away and work on. And I, I do really believe that the place only benefits from that kind of input from all of the people. Like, I would never want people to go away unhappy with how the union is running and operating and just quite kind of stewing over. I would want them to definitely come forward, tell myself, tell anyone, literally anyone, to cut like what they want fixed and what they want to see us do better and we can definitely try and make that a thing.